Hello everyone, we are doing voiceover mode this month because that is the only way I'm going to be able to get a podcast in. I have been trying to sit down with a camera for six weeks and it hasn't happened yet, so this is what we're going to do. First off, I just wanted to show you this new tarot deck that I got for Christmas for my mother-in-law. It's super cute, so I thought that we would try pulling a card to start off the podcast. So this is the Cats Rule the Earth Tarot. It was illustrated by Thiago Coria, and it was written by Katherine Davidson. It's got a beautiful full-color book that comes with it, tons of spreads. I've looked through that a little bit and I did kind of pre-shuffle these cards a little bit. These are die cut cards so they do have a little bit of a lip right there on the edge where they've been cut, off, cut out. So when I first got these the cards were sticking together really really bad. So I'm just going to shuffle these real quick. Oh. and see what we pull out. Okay, so we have the Ace of Pentacles. This is a new beginning, finances, uh, a new business venture potentially, just a fresh start, which is perfect for the new year. But I love these cards. A lot of them look like my cats and they even have little disabled kitties and it's so sweet. There is one in here that looks an awful lot like Gwid. This one reminds me of Morrigan. I love this card. It's so cute. And this is very much Hermes. He loves knocking things off the counters. That is his main hobby. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Spooky Stitches podcast. If you're new here, my name is Sheena Peril. I'm an author and knitwear designer from the Pacific Northwest. And this is the hopefully monthly podcast where I talk about what I'm knitting, crocheting, writing, reading, all that good stuff. We usually have some kind of a ghost story at the end of the podcast, but due to time constraints, I'm going to have to leave that off this week because like I said, I have been trying to sit down with the camera for six weeks and it has not been happening. I've filmed a couple little clips of stuff that I've been working on, but overall it's going to be a little bit chaotic here. So the last two months have just been, it's been up and down. I had a lot of up and downs with my temp job, just with getting started, figuring out what was going on with that. Um, we also had the time change, which really hits me hard. I have seasonal affective disorder. I also have chronic fatigue syndrome and the combination of so much dark and going back to work and all of that just it really really took it out of me and i've been very tired <laughs> for several weeks um i'm working on it i'm trying a couple new medications but unfortunately because it is chronic fatigue syndrome there isn't a whole lot that can be done so uh, let's just go ahead and dive right into the finished objects, which I will show some clip, some clips or photos in here. Because of my work schedule, it has been so friggin' dark for the whole month of December. I have not been able to get decent photos of anything because our apartment is dark to begin with. By the time I get home, it is so dark outside. It's been raining. It's just been, it, it's just been dark. <laughs> so it hasn't been a great setup for getting final object photos. Um, I'm going to do the best that I can here, but again, I'm probably just going to have to do flat lays. 
of the pieces so that you can kind of get an idea of what they look like. Um, and then I'll have some bathroom photos because that's the best I can do right now in terms of the lighting and the layout. Um, it, it's not a great situation, but it's what I've got to work with. So the first thing that I finished was the first Wednesday vest, and I'm not going to go into detail on this here because it is going to be the star of another episode of On Wednesdays We Wear Black, which is a long-term project I'm working on where I explore the use of knitting and crochet as a storytelling method in the Wednesday Addams Netflix TV series, and you'll find links to that series above. So I used Caron Simply Soft for this. I believe it is two skeins of off-white and two to three skeins of black, um, but I don't have all of the ball bands for that, so I'm not positive. It took forever. It is Tunisian crocheted. It was my first ever Tunisian crochet project. Um, And it is a self-drafted pattern based off of images from the TV show. Obviously, I had to make a lot of alterations to it, but I'm not talking about that here. I'm going to talk about that in the other video. I will say that it is very warm. I've worn it a couple of times. I think it looks really great with a leather jacket over it. Without a jacket, I kind of feel like the checkered flag from a NASCAR race not going to lie, but still it's pretty warm and I've worn it a couple of times to work. My second finished object is the goth flamingo sweater. Now this still does need to be blocked. Um, unfortunately, another thing that happened in the last six weeks is my cat decided that he lives on our counter now. So it is no longer safe for me to block. And just to be clear, he is not allowed on the counter. In 15 and a half years, he has never been allowed on the counter. But he's just decided that he is old and infirm and he can do what he wants. And short of standing at the counter 24-7 with a squirt bottle, there's no way to keep him off of it. We have tried everything. Yes, I tried that too. It's just the way things are. <laughs> so it hasn't been blocked. I'm trying to find a new blocking space that is cat safe haven't come up with one because we have a very small apartment. Um, so I've still worn it. I think it's really great. I think that once it is blocked, the body is going to loosen up a lot and it's going to become more like mini dress length. Right now it goes down to my low hip. So it is very comfortable. It's exactly the length that I wanted. The black yarn is Red Wing Blackbird, which is a Knit Pick Stroll hand paint yarn. It's fingering weight and it's a sock yarn. So I believe it's a 75-25. And then the hot pink coral yarn. This is on their Zeus base, which is 100% superwash merino. It's a fingering single. 100 grams is 366 meters. And the color is called When You Play the Game of Indy. I really love these two yarns together. Um, I knew that I wanted to do something with the Trey Liz that was kind of special. And when I bought it, I had originally bought it for socks, not realizing that I had ordered a singles yarn. So I think that it's going to be perfect for the sleeves. It's really great. Um, it's very comfortable. It's not itchy or irritating on my skin and I have pretty sensitive skin. And actually once the sweater was done, I still have probably a third to half of a ball of the Trey Liz left and I still have a full skein of Red Wing Blackbird left. So I don't know what I'm going to do with those. I'm thinking either socks or a beret, maybe both if I have enough. Um, but let me know what you think. What should I use these two yarns for? Leave a comment down below. Okay, the next thing I finished, I totally forgot to get finished object photos for. And these are a pair of ankle socks that I made for my mother-in-law. They're just a basic vanilla toe-up sock, short row heel with a pico bind off on the ribbing. Um, the only thing different about these from my normal socks is instead of 10 rows of ribbing, I did 20 and then I did that pico bind off. 
I am not mistaken, I used Malabrigo sock for this, which is 440 yards, 3.5 ounces, and it is kettle dyed merino superwash, and the color is 247 Wales Road. Um, I really love this yarn. I love Malabrigo. It's one of my favorite sock yarns. I still have most of the ball left. I used maybe a third of the skein for this. So I do have plans for my leftovers, but I'm not going to get into that in this podcast. You're going to have to wait until the next one. I think I'm going to do another episode where I talk about the projects that I am planning to do in 2024. But we're not there yet and I'm still just trying to get caught up at this moment. <laughs> so those are my three finished objects that I was really really trying to get done in the month of December. I still have a few works in progress um, so let me go grab those and I will show them to you. Okay so number one I have the next Wednesday sweater. This is the front and I'm knitting it in vertical panels just to make it faster and easier to assemble. The original is a Zara sweater from I think 2014 is what my research said. And so it is knit, it is not hand knit, but it looks like it could be. So I'm copying that. This is again a self-drafted pattern for just a deep v-neck sweater vest. Um, I'm doing the vertical panels just to make sure that I get a nice crisp line and the vertical color changes and that I don't have some weird thing going on with my tension. So it's currently held together with stitch markers just to make sure that all of my main points, like where the V starts and where my color changes happen, those all line up perfectly. And I'm currently starting on the third panel, which is the first part of the back. I'm that far on it. And this is, once again, the Caron Simply Soft in black and off-white. And I'm using my Knit Picks Interchangeable Needles in a size seven or 4.5 millimeter. Oh, and if you wanted the stats for the Caron Simply Soft, it just came from Joanne Fabrics. It is 100% acrylic, it's Aran weight, 315 yards equals 288 meters, six ounce balls. And I think that's really the high notes on this. My next project is based off of the Outlander capelet, these planes. My next pattern is based off of the Outlander capelet. Uh, it's the short capelet that Claire wears for the boar hunt in season one. This was requested by Ash for part of her SCA or Society of Creative Anachronism kit. So. I found the pattern online. It was $10. And when I looked at the pictures, I'm like, I'm not paying $10 for that because I can absolutely tell exactly how it's made. So number one, I don't need the pattern. And number two, I don't need to pay that much for it. Um, yes, I am a cheapskate when it comes to patterns. It comes from being poor for the first 10 years of my knitting journey. So I started out on a size US 4 needle and knit. This is seed stitch if you are in the US or moss stitch if you're in the UK. Um, and knit the collar and then halfway down the collar there is a row of purl stitches to make a nice neat fold over edge. So it folds over like this. And then once I got to the bottom of the collar, I switched to a size six needle because honestly, the size four is really too small for this yarn. And I did a raglan 
increase or a pair of raglan increases on each shoulder and then there's another one in the center back at the top. Now I should know Ash has very wide shoulders so I'm actually knitting about eight inches from the bottom of the collar to where I can stop the increases um, and that's just to make sure that she has plenty of room and it's not hugging her shoulders too tightly. So I'm almost done with the raglan increases and about halfway down the shoulder, right about here-ish, I actually switched to a size 8 needle because this was still so tight it was hurting my hands. And the reason for that is that I am using Broca Remix Light and I'm holding it triple. So this is, I believe, a fingering weight yarn, fingering-ish. Um, it is 30% nylon, 27% cotton, 24% acrylic, 10% silk, and 9% linen. So it doesn't have a ton of give to it as a yarn, but it is very soft. It's tweedy, and when it's held triple like this, it has a little bit of fuzz that makes it look like a feltable wool yarn, which is the look that we were going for. So it's really great for uh, historical projects if you have a lanolin sensitivity or just a wool sensitivity in general if you're vegan this would be really great for historical projects if you want that wool look without any kind of reaction or anything this was $16 a ball at my local yarn shop the color is $69.84 ocean and I will note that this does come in a bulkier yarn. I think it comes in worsted is the other size that I saw just recently, but um, it's not going to give you that sort of woolly effect if you just use one strand of the thicker yarn, uh, that, which is why I'm using three strands of the thinner version. Um, it's 100% recycled. I really love working with it. I'm planning on going back to get more to make myself something. Um, don't know what yet, but eventually I will. And so this right here is half of my first three balls. I've still got about a softball size ball of yarn left which will take me to the end of the increases. And then we ordered two more skeins so that I can finish off the end of it. But it's really pretty. It's a nice teal, and then it has flecks of lighter blue in there. Um, the one thing I don't like about it, and I don't know if this is because of the linen content, but there's like veggie matter there's like veggie matter stuck in the yarn. I don't know where that's coming from because there really shouldn't be. So I don't know if this is like the casing from the flax or if it's just linen that hasn't been fully processed. What the deal is, um, it's there. I can pick it out. It's not a big deal. It's just, it's kind of annoying. My last uh, work in progress right now is a rainbow sweater. If you've seen my icon up in the corner, my little avatar, that is me wearing the rainbow sweater 1.0. Um, I'm really happy with it, but there are still some things that I want to change about it. I want to change the way the sleeves are done. That one, I used a kit from Knit Picks that's no longer available. It's meant for an afghan, not for a sweater. Um, I want to change the placement of the armholes and because I was using individual skeins of each color there are a lot of ends there and it just doesn't look as nice as I think it could. I also because I was trying to get it done faster I used too large of a needle and so the sweater doesn't really support its own weight. It stretches really bad and I don't think that it looks very good a couple of years on. So after I had made that sweater, we got the 
the Caron Cakes and the Lion Brand Mandala that has the really long color progressions. This style of yarn wasn't available when I was making that sweater, or at least it wasn't available at a reasonable price and in an accessible location. So this is Lion Brand Mandala. The colorway is called Gnome. It's 100% acrylic again. Um, which would not be my first choice, but I haven't found this repeated in a natural fiber at an affordable price. And all I'm doing is I cast on six stitches, started knitting in the round, um, knit the first row. On the second row, I did yarn over, knit one all the way around, knit the next row then yarn over, knit two, and kept going like that around and around and around, and you get this spiral pinwheel. So basically I have, I think, five or six skeins of this, and I'm taking all but two, and I'm just going to knit them into the body as a circle, and it's just going to be a great big knit circle. And then once that's done, I can take some measurements, take some measurements on the original sweater, decide where I want to move the sleeves to. And then from there, um, I can do afterthought sleeves and cut a slit, which is how I did it in the first one. I cut a slit in the knitting, picked up stitches, and then made the sleeves from the shoulder down, which is how I'm planning on doing it again this time. Um, now I should note that this is much thinner than what I used for the original. The original was in Knit Picks Brava, which I, I used either a size 7 or a size 9 knitting needle on that, and I should have gone down to either a 5 or a 7. I'm not sure. And then this one, the recommended needle size for the yarn is a size 5. And I looked at the ball band and I looked at the yarn and I'm like, there's no way a size five is going to get me a decent gauge on this. It's going to be so open that it's not going to look good. I'm going to have the exact same problem. So I went down to a size three and this is just a fixed circular size three needle. It's the longest cord that I have. So I'm literally just going to be knitting until I run out of yarn. Um, size 3, 3.25 millimeter. These are Chowgu, which are my favorite needles. And we're just plugging away on it. I do have a rough idea of how big I need the circle to be before I bind off. Um, I also might end up adding some short rows so that it's a little bit more oval shaped just to get a better fit. But I'm going to hold off on doing that until later on because it's not going to become an issue until I have at least two skeins into this. Only other thing I have on the needles right now is, uh, oh, I do have the cat blanket, which is in progress. I'm not going to show it to you here because it's getting rather large and kind of hard to show, but I'll insert some still photos of it. Uh, that is a, I'm replicating an afghan that Ash's grandmother made for her when she was little, um, except her grandmother made it in pink, white, and gray, which are really not her colors. And then one of our cats ate it a few years ago. So I finally managed to track down the stitch pattern and I'm replicating it for her out of, uh, what's it called? It's the Joanne acrylic. Um, it's like their version of Red Heart, but it's a bit softer than Red Heart. And I'm doing it in lilac and a darker purple, like a royal purple. And then uh, the only other thing that I have going is the Eleanor project. I wanted so badly to get that done by the end of the year, but my other projects ended up taking precedence just because the uh, the Wednesday sweater, I have a video series waiting on it. Um, the Flamingo sweater has been on the needles for months and I just wanted to get it off and be able to wear it. And then um, obviously the socks I needed to get done for Christmas. So that is on hold until January 1st. I'm trying to wrap up a few loose ends right now and then 
um, instead of a New Year's Eve cast on, I'm going to do uh, work on the Eleanor project. Start as you mean to go on. Well, I just recorded for 10 minutes without my camera on. Yay. Okay, so what we have here are some recent acquisitions. And these are all yarns that I got for Ash. They don't have specific projects earmarked for them yet, but because it's so hard to find yarns that she can use and likes the texture of that are suitable for different types of projects and the types of projects she asks me for, I like to have a little bit of a stash on hand for her. That way, if she asks for something specific or I get an idea of something to make for her, I can just go into that stash and pull out something that she will like and it's a lot easier. I don't stash so much for myself anymore just because I'm a lot easier to shop for. Um, but like I said, she's a little bit harder to shop for. So this one came from my LYS, the new knittery. This is Barocco Medina. It's cotton acrylic and viscose. And let me find the colorway. Oh, oh is it Biscra? Is that the color? 781. Okay, yeah, I guess that's the color. Biscra. That's how much it was at my local yarn shop. And it's not showing up that well on camera, but this is sort of like a dark navy blue with brown. Um and both of us, we saw this and our first words were, I wish it had more green in it so it looked like verdigris. Um, however, they did not have a green version of this. I'm going to look online and see if Barocco makes a shade that is green and brown because I know she would love that. Um, but it's still really cool and she doesn't know what she wants me to make with this yet, but it's one that she picked out just so I have it on hand for the future. The second one from this order, I'm always looking for good solid blacks that I can use for her because she is a bit goth, obviously. She's more goth than I am. And this is Universal Yarns Bamboo Pop. It's 50% cotton, 50% bamboo, and it's just black. I had a coupon for Universal Yarn from Shop. So I went ahead and just ordered some different yarns from them that I could test out. And this one, I wasn't sure on this one. This one's an experiment. This is a sock yarn that I got for her. It's Bamboo Pop Sock. And the reason I wasn't sure about it is this sort of crinkly texture. I'm not sure how that's going to knit up and I'm not sure I will enjoy knitting with it doesn't really seem to have any elastic in it, but those coils do give it a little tiny bit of stretch. So we'll see how it turns out. Um, but this is probably going to be for a pair of socks. Also for socks, I got Radiant Cotton from Fibra Natura, which is another branch of uh, Universal Yarns. It's Egyptian cotton. I've used a very similar yarn to this before, so I know that I like it. I know that she likes it. The color is 803 Grape, and I got two skeins of this just because I've noticed that cotton socks tend to take up more of the ball of yarn, so I wanted to make sure that I had enough to make two mid-calf height socks for her. And I might end up using it with black, um, do some kind of color work or stripes or something. I don't know yet. Okay, next up is another Ash yarn. This is Line Brand Hometown. It's just some cheap acrylic, which I got because she got um, a green platypus plushie from Squishmallow and 
she's a big Phineas and Ferb fan, so she asked me to crochet a fedora for it. And the color is Stowe Sugar Maple. Um, I was just trying to find the best brown that I could for the lowest price. This will work. And my last yarn acquisition is also from that Universal Yarns order. This is Wisdom Yarns Wacky Sacky. It is 50% Merino Superwash, 25% Bamboo, 25% Nylon. And it's a sock yarn that I got for myself. Uh, it feels a lot like Stroll. It's not quite as soft as Stroll, but it's also not as scratchy as uh, Knit Picks Hawthorne, which is their other sock yarn that I've used, um, which I can't really wear the Hawthorne against my skin. But it is very soft. This is self-patterning. I don't know if it has a picture of it in here. Yeah, that's, that's what it's supposed to look like once it's knit up. I thought that was really cool. And hopefully I will be able to get a pair of socks out of this single ball. Um, I might have to do contrasting toes, heels, and cuffs, but that's totally fine. And I th I'm kind of thinking about ordering just some plain black sock yarn anyway for some other projects because I can never find enough black sock yarn. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you is one of my Christmas gifts from my in-laws. This is a set of Leica, that's the pronunciation I'm going with, um, interchangeable needles. These are driftwood. And they weren't really on my radar. I mean, I knew they existed, but I'm very much a metal needle fan. Um, and these are wood, so I hadn't really considered them as an option for me, but if I can get one of these out. They are a very highly polished wood. And there's not enough here for my camera to focus. Um, they're very highly polished. They've got sort of a satin finish to them, but they're incredibly smooth. They're really nice to work with and they have a great join once the cable is on. Um, actually, while we were at their house for Christmas, I was working on that cape for Ash, and my Knit Picks needles kept coming undone. So I was like, you know, I have another set here. I might as well swap them out. So I took off these needles, and the cable, which is taking these out so I can put them away. Um took out these and swapped it out for the same size in the Leica needles and it's working a lot better. Um, the thing that I noticed about these so the thing I noticed that I didn't know is that these connectors actually swivel on the cable, which I wasn't aware of. And that's not a feature that my Knit Picks needles have. So it comes with a bunch of cords. I'm not sure all of the sizes. Uh, it doesn't, it didn't have a list in the packaging or if it did, the dog ate it immediately. As soon as I set down the little sleeve that went over the package, uh, one of their dogs tore it into confetti. So um, I don't know what size cables there are. It did come with, looks like eight stoppers. Uh, the connection instructions and then it's got two keys or yeah, three keys and then two extenders. So if you need to connect multiple cords together, you can do that. And then the sizes are 
US 4 or 3.5 millimeter through US 17, which I think is larger than most sets. And okay, there we go. 12 millimeter is the size on that. So these are really nice. Um, they're also blue, which I didn't know they came in blue. And blue is my favorite color, as you might have been able to tell. Like anything from this color to this color, those are my favorites. I'm really enjoying these so far. Uh, I'm still planning on getting myself a set of Chowgu needles, just because I still think that the metal is good for specific types of yarns and patterns. Um, and I also want to get their interchangeable sock set. Um, but that is a ways in the future. So those are all of my acquisitions. Um, I started out playing Dreamlight Valley with the expansion pack, um, but also fell off on that because there was just so much going on in December. Uh, the only thing I'm reading right now is The Nutcracker by Alexandre Dumont, who is one of my favorite authors ever. This was a Christmas present last year from Ash. She knows that I love The Nutcracker. I love Dumas. So I'm slowly reading it. I have not had the wherewithal to sit down and read very much the last couple of weeks. Um, but I do still want to finish it before the new year. So hopefully I can do that this week. And that is it. I know that this podcast has been very fractured and late and very unusual format, but like I said, the last couple of months have been a ride. I'm glad they're over. I'm so glad that we are almost done with 2023 and I'm hoping that 2024 is significantly better. So until I see you next time, please stay safe, stay healthy, and I hope that you have something cute and fluffy to cuddle with. Ciao. Your knees. You gonna say goodbye? Hmm? You gonna say goodbye on the podcast? No? You don't really care, do you?